So in today's video, we're going to look at how to combine data from multiple tabs into one central or master database. So the first thing you want to do is to make sure you have the same columns and in the same order across the tabs that you want to combine. Next, we can create a tab to create our database. And so we'll just call this database. And then we can use the same column headers. And so we can just copy these here. And then we can paste them here. And this automatically created a table. And so if it didn't create a table, and it looks like this, we can convert it into a table if you like, which helps with table references. In that case, you would just select it like this. We do format and convert to table. So I prefer using tables because the references are much easier now. And so I'm going to do it this way. But the next process is going to look the same, regardless of which way you do this. I'm just going to delete these extra columns real quick. And then we come over here. And we're going to use a query formula because this makes it very easy to aggregate. And so in this case, because all these are tables, I can actually just use the table reference just like this. But if you do not have tables, then you need to use the tab name, which is in this case the same, and then that data. And so in this case, it'd be A2 to E, just like that. And then we'll do a semicolon, and then we'll do the rest of them just like this. So if we go like this, A2 to E, and then let's just look at what happens here. So there's our January data. And if we scroll down, you can see it looks like there's the end of our data. But let's scroll down just a little bit further and see what happens. So if we scroll down further, you can see here is our February data. So why is this happening? So if we go to our January tab and we scroll down, we can see we have some blank rows. This is typical. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of logic here. And so in a query, we can add a statement. And so we can say select all. That's what the asterisk means. Where let's say column one is not null. And then this zero is just saying if there's any title rows in our data. So this is what it looked like. And if we scroll down, now we can see there's no gap. So it got rid of those blank rows. Now, one thing to keep in mind with this is what happens if you have some blanks in this first column? Well, in this, that case, what you can do is adjust this and you could say, or column two is not null. Just make sure that between however many columns you select, that at least one of them will have data. So you could go across the board if you need to, or column three is not null. And then if there is data in any of those columns, then we'll pull it back in here. But this is the basics of how you do that. So if you have tables, then you can get rid of the rest of this reference and literally just do January and February like this. And you can see we have the same thing. And in this case, then we can just do the rest of the months just like this. Let's see, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. And you can see how quickly we can put this together. So now if we scroll down, we can see that we have all the months now in this tab. So let's look at one more thing real quick before we finish up this video, because in this case, it's apparent which tab that comes from, because this is January data. But what happens if you have data that doesn't have a date like this. How would you be able to determine what tab it came from? So let's go ahead and add a new column over here and we'll call this tab. And the easiest way to do this is to come into each one of these and we'll call this tab. And then what we're going to do here is just say if A2 is blank, show nothing. Otherwise, we're going to show January. And then we're going to let this fill down. And so in a table, once you've applied that formula all the way down, it's going to automatically increment there. And so every time we add a new row, that formula is going to be there and make sure that we have that tab name. So now all we got to do is copy this and then we're going to do the same thing. So tab and then let's put that in there. And then we just need to change this to February. I'm just going to do this across all these tabs and then we'll reconvene here in a second. All right, so now we have this new column on all these tabs with this formula that populates the tab name. But I want to show you one more thing real quick here, because if you do not have a table, then this formula is not going to automatically populate. So in the new tables, every time you add a new row, it automatically populates any formulas that may exist. 
But if you don't have a table, then it's not going to. So how would you populate this automatically if you do not have a table? So in that case, I'm going to delete these formulas. And what I'm going to do here is use what's called an array formula. And then what we're going to do is a2 to a is blank, do nothing otherwise that name there. And so this would just be the name of our tab. And now you can see it goes all the way down to here. And then there is no formula over here, as you can see. But if we added a new row here with some data, you can see that automatically populates. And so that's how you'd solve for if you're not using a table and still want to make sure that tab reference pulls through. All right, so now we have our tabs all populated with that tab name. If we come back to the database, because we already have the tab pulling in, it already has it all coming in just like that. And so as we scroll down, we can see what tab it came from. And so this works great if you don't have maybe a month or something like that. This could be a rep or whatever it is that you're pulling in. And so this allows you to reference where that data is coming from. And now you can use this to populate a dashboard or whatever automations or things that you need to accomplish. All right, so that's it for today's video. Make sure to check out the other videos on our channel for more tutorials on both Google Sheets and AppScript. And as always, have a great day.